Here are two vectors, A and B. We want to know the portion of one vector that lies along the other. To do this, we slide the two vectors until they are placed tail to tail. It's okay to move a vector around as long as you don't turn it or stretch it. Theta is the smallest angle between the two vectors when they are placed tail to tail. To be sure that we are using the correct angle, we'll often specify that this is theta sub tail to tail. See that the portion A cosine theta is the part of vector A that lies along vector B. This is often said to be the portion of A that is parallel to B. And A sine theta is the portion of vector A that is perpendicular to vector B. Many quantities in physics depend on the portion of one vector that lies along another or on the portion of one vector that's perpendicular to another vector. The perpendicular portion is found from the vector cross product, which we will begin using in the chapter about rotational motion and torque. The scalar or dot product of two vectors A and B is pronounced A dot B and it's defined to be the magnitude of A times the magnitude of B times the cosine of the angle between the two vectors when they are placed tail to tail. This gives the portion of vector A that lies along B, or equivalently, the portion of vector B that lies along A. For A equal 33 newtons, and the magnitude of B is 44 newtons, and the angle between them is 55 degrees. Please calculate the dot product A dot B. Did you get 830? The units would be newtons squared. We'll show in a minute that the dot product can also be written as the product of the x components of A and B plus the product of the y components of vectors A and B plus the product of the z components of vectors a and b. Notice that a dot b equals zero when cosine theta equals zero, which occurs when theta equals 90 degrees. If the dot product of two vectors is zero, that means the two vectors are mutually perpendicular. For example, the unit vectors are mutually perpendicular. i dot k would be calculated as the magnitude of the first vector, which is 1, times the magnitude of the second vector, which is 1, times the cosine of the angle between them, which is 90 degrees, so we get 0. We have i hat dot j hat equals 0, j hat dot k hat equals 0, and i hat dot i hat equals 1, as does j dot j and k dot k. Non-calculus students stop the video here. To obtain this equation, we act as if we are multiplying two trinomials. Out of the nine terms, only three are not zero. We write vector a dot vector b. Here is vector a and its components dot vector b and its components multiplying trinomials and including the dot product, we have the first term ax i hat dot bx i hat plus byj hat plus bz k hat. And then we do the middle term ayj hat dot each one of these three. And then the third term az k hat dot each one of these three. This begins with ax bx times i dot i, which is 1. So this makes ax bx. We have blue dot green equals pink, and then the result is placed on the last line. Plus ax by i dot j, which is 0. Plus ax bz i dot k, which is 0 plus aybx j dot i, which is 0, plus ayby 
J dot J, which is 1, plus AYBZ, J dot K, which is 0, plus AZBX, K dot I, which is 0, plus AZBY, K dot J, which is 0, plus AZBZ, K dot K, which is 1. Out of the nine terms, we're left with A dot B equals AXBX plus AYBY plus AZBZ. For example, find the angle between the two vectors A equals 3I hat plus 2J hat plus 3K hat and vector B equals minus 2I plus 4J minus 3K. We use A dot B equals AXBX plus AYBY plus AZBZ equals the magnitude of A times the magnitude of B times the cosine of the angle theta. To determine theta, find the magnitude A equals the square root of 22. Find the magnitude of vector B. Calculate the left hand side equals AXBX plus AYBY plus AZBZ and then solve for theta. Please write down all the numbers and then calculate the final result. Theta equals 106 degrees. Imagine the XY coordinate system along the junctions of your floor and walls. Point your two hands in the direction of these two vectors. Vector A lies three units in the X direction, two units in the Y direction, and three units in the Z direction. Vector B equals minus 2i hat plus 4j hat minus 3k hat. Each component of the vector A equals axi hat plus ayj hat plus azk hat is the portion of A that lies along the corresponding unit vector. We have ax equals the dot product of vector A and unit vector i. AY equals A dot J, and AZ equals A dot K. Why have one name for something when you can have three names for it? Half the time you'll see the unit vectors written as I hat, J hat, and K hat. The second half of the time you'll see them written as X hat, Y hat, Z hat. The third half of the time you'll see them written as E1 hat, E2 hat. E3 hat. It is more convenient to use numbers rather than names so that we can write A dot B equals AXBX plus AYBY plus AZBZ as the sum from K equal 1 to 3 AK times BK. The math does not care how many dimensions there are. In N dimensions the dot product is A dot B equals the sum from k equal 1 to n of ak times bk. In this sum, for each k equal 1 to n, there is an ak and a bk. In integral calculus, such Riemann sums always go to integrals as n becomes infinite. The dot product of two infinite dimensional vectors is a dot b is the integral of a of k times b of k dk, where for each point along the k-axis there is an a of k and a b of k. There are an infinite number of points along the k-axis, so each of the two functions, a of k and b of k, are considered to be an infinite dimensional vector. If the integration gives zero for this dot product, then the two vectors a and b are mutually perpendicular to each other. For example, with integers n and m, we have 2 over pi times integral of 0 to pi sine nx times sine mx dx equals Kronecker delta mn, where the Kronecker delta function equals 1 if m equals n, or 0 if m is not equal to n. These two sine functions, which are infinite dimensional vectors, are mutually orthogonal across the interval 0 to pi, so they can be used as unit vectors, and other vectors can be expanded in terms of them. 
the portion of, let's scroll up, the portion of f of x that lies in the direction of sine 3x is 2 over pi times the integral 0 to pi of f of x sine 3x dx. In quantum mechanics, the portion of one infinite dimensional vector that lies in the direction of another gives the probability of measuring a corresponding value.